Welcome to our Halloween special. Today we'll be playing Alone Against Fear. Uh, Alone Against Fear being uh, closely uh, similar to uh, Four Against the Darkness. Uh, I have already decided uh, for our, our mission uh, to, today, we have three characters that we will be working our way through. Uh, I, I was thinking about Alone Against Fear. It seems very much reminiscent of the Buffy the Vampire Slayer episode where the uh, Sunnydale uh, becomes, uh, it's the uh, Halloween, it's actually the Halloween special where the person selling the uh, Halloween costumes has uh, enchanted them and everyone becomes as their costumes are. Uh, it's where Xander becomes a soldier. So I thought we will be in Sunnydale. Uh, this is this is Sunnydale. How we explore, we begin in a certain location, and so what what we will have we'll have our central location will be uh, uh, Buffy's house. This is where we begin. Uh, start, and so we will start at Buffy's house, and where we have we will have uh, Xander. Uh, we will have Violet, who is a uh, uh, an, aw an awakened Slayer. Uh, Violet, so Xander, uh, jeans, puffy jacket. Uh, uh, Xander has a 10 sanity and nine uh, life in Alone Against Fear. You begin with eight in both of those stats and then you can spend three points between the two of them. Uh, uh, Xander is resistant to hunger uh, and has medic, which means that if Xander can get his hands on a first aid kit, he can heal three points. Uh, Xander is carrying a bow, which he is minus one to attack with. It will do two damage. He has eight arrows. He's also carrying seven candles, four items of food, uh, a bottle of alcohol that he's secreted about his person, because we all know the actor who played Xander had some issues. Mind you, that was Hillbilly her Heroin. And uh, Xander has the knife that everybody has. Xander will be the first character we will use. Then we have Violet. Uh, Violet is a, a teenage girl. Uh, wearing a, a dark red plaid shirt. Uh, she dresses in black, uh, has big black uh, track pants, big black shoes, and is uh, uh, standard. She is tough, thus has plus two life, having an 11 life, and is agile, which gives her a plus one defense. Uh, she is has got her hands on a rifle with nine rounds of ammunition. The rifle is plus two to hit and does two damage. Uh, she is carrying a flute uh, because secretly she took flute. Uh, she has six energy drinks, which can be used as food, a knife and five random items of food, energy bars, chocolate, uh, apples, etc. And finally, we have Merrick. Uh, Merrick is a uh, watcher that has appeared from the woodwork and is at Buffy's house. Uh, Merrick has 10 sanity and nine life. Merrick has a holy symbol, uh, which can be used, a symbol of faith, which can be used to turn vampires. Merrick is a good shot, and Merrick has a shotgun, which is plus two to hit, doing two damage, and Merrick has seven shotgun shells. For some reason, Merrick has a creepy doll, a gas mask, a knife, and only mere three items of food. So first, we will have Xander will go out to, uh, to explore the uh, town of Sunnydale. Uh, if Merrick dies, because I did a test run and they die quite quickly, we will then go to Violet and we will then go to Merrick. My intention is that we will have three episodes in this special, uh, if we, if they will last that long, uh, each episode being around half an hour in length. Uh, our mission, which I rolled before we began, uh, is that we need to, uh, so, so basically, uh, the hell gates have opened. There are seven hell gates that have opened. They're spilling forth the evils of the underworld. Uh, and ultimately, in an Alone Against Fear campaign, you close seven hell gates. If we manage to close a hell gate, that would be great. Uh, but I don't know if we will. Uh, so specifically, you try to complete a mission uh, with, with every playthrough every session. Our session's only been half an hour. We probably will only get one mission done. The mission that we rolled was destroy the coven. Uh, you must defeat five witches hiding in town. To find a witch, when you enter a new box, you must spend three clues. 
spend just two clues if you have, we don't have the invest we might get it investigation skill and one clue if you have investigation expert if you do not have enough clothes roll on the random contents of the box as usual you will automatically meet a witch in any of the last five locations on the map you visit in the town map but if you did not discover them by spending clues they will have a five in six chance of surprising you uh, if you want to spend one or more clues to reduce this chance of surprise by one for every clue spent. Also, your danger sense skill, blah, 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 blah. If you take a witch alive, uh, witches are level four humans for life. They inflict no damage, but each turn you are in combat with witch, you must perform a level five will save uh, or lose one sanity if you fail. So this is if we do. Uh, I will also incorporate if we encounter any witches during normal uh, investigation of uh, Sunnydale, uh, we'll say that they're part of the coven as well, uh, just to do. So, we shall continue. Uh, Xander uh, has taken uh, it upon himself to be the first out of the gate. Uh, he collects up his food, he collects up his knife, he uh, secretly takes a swig uh, of his alcohol, and uh, he will go out. It is, so every box that we travel, uh, is about two hours worth of walking and exploring. So we will say we are starting at the witching hour. It is 12 midnight. Uh, oh, one extra thing. So for every five boxes for Xander at six, uh, you must consume one item of food, which is about 10 hours, which is fair enough. So we have our start. So Xander will uh, turn to the other people in the house. So Buffy's out fighting uh, the big bad uh, and it isn't in the, uh, the Buffy's house at the moment so Xander will turn and say I I will go and I will find those witches and I will I will end that coven we won't need to be worried about and Buffy can be proud of me for ending the coven I, I'll do this uh, uh, he then uh, leaves the house and uh, so we can move to any one of these boxes so we will go north East, uh, west is best. So Danda is going to move into this box here, which means that we roll on the town exploration table. 2d6, oh, 12. Uh, which is, so we enter a park. So there's, there's uh, so just outside across the road, there's a patch of green grass uh, where with some playthings and various other things. So we roll on page 58. 58. Maybe I'll switch into more of a Halloween-y voice. Page 58. 1d6 Woods and Parks. 1. A werewolf attack. Uh, uh, so whilst, so we have a werewolf, a level 4 werewolf. I'll show you all how this works in a minute. Level 4 werewolf uh, with 8 life. It does to damage. Silver weapons uh, hit the werewolf at plus two, has a two inch chance of surprise, so we're all surprised in a second. At the beginning of the encounter, you must save versus fear or choose. Okay, so we'll do, we'll do this first. So does it surprise us? No. Okay, so at the beginning of the encounter, we have to do a save versus fear or lose one sanity or be on minus one defense roll for the duration of the encounter. Any escape rolls after you've played this encounter twice in a game, ignore it and roll on the beast tape. Oh, okay. So, now we need to save versus fear. Now, saving, attacking, or everything else. So, within uh, Alone Against Fear, the monsters, the game, doesn't roll dice. Only the player rolls dice. So, uh, I save against things. It doesn't try and hit me. I defend. It, it's a bit like Mork Bork. Uh, so, we have a level three fear save attempt. No. So, uh, uh, Xander is terrified by the howl of the werewolf springing out from behind uh, a bush and a, and a seat, which is overflowing. There's litter all over the place in the park. Uh, Sunnydale has just gone to rack and ruin. Uh, and dives out, howling at the moon, and comes bounding towards Xander, terrifying Xander, who fouls on his fear save. Uh, I will say that terrified by the howls of the werewolf at the moon, Xander stands frozen as it comes bounding towards him. Uh, Xander is terrified and I will say will lose one sanity. 
out of that. Uh, yes, so uh, Xander still can defend it the same way. The werewolf didn't surprise Xander, so the werewolf will, uh, Xander will come to his senses and then will uh, attempt to pull back the bow just as the werewolf is about to dive at him and uh, fire at the uh, werewolf. A five minus one with the bow, bow because uh, Xander has no bow skill, so Xander is at minus one, which is a four. It is a uh, werewolf level four. Uh, so that's a four divided by four uh, is a one. Uh, so that's how, how you do damage in uh, uh, Alone Against Fear. You total up your roll and then you divide it by the level of the uh, creature you're trying to attack. Uh, you round down. If it, of course, comes to zero, it does no damage. If it's a multiplier of one, you then multiply that by the damage of the weapon, and that's how much damage you do against the thing. Uh, our bow does two points of damage, which means that we do... Uh, the, the arrow strikes into the haunches of the werewolf. Uh, it howls in pain, uh, but continues. It doesn't stop. It's bounding, bounding towards Xander. Xander looks terrified standing there, eyes wide as the werewolf dives at Xander, claws out, and Xander attempts to dodge out of the way. Uh, and how you do dodging, you roll again uh, and try to, so Xander has to beat a four to dodge. Uh, rolling a one is always a failure. The werewolf pounce, to claws dig into Xander's chest, the uh, puffer jacket the his tears and the inner fluff comes out as the claws embed into Xander's chest, doing two points of damage, leaving Xander on seven health life. The, the werewolf casts Xander against the bench. Uh, litter is spread into the air. Uh, the, the night crackles with tension as Xander attempts to notch another arrow, firing it at the werewolf. Screaming at the top of his voice. No, <laughs> so the arrow, uh, the fear of Xander uh, means that his shoulder catches against the edge of the bench and the arrow tweets off into the air. Buffy would be so disappointed in me, says Xander, as the werewolf howls and a strange sort of salivary grin seems to come upon its uh, primitive wolfen face as it's uh, a mixture of blood and survivor gyps, drips from its jowls and it dives at Xander. Uh, Xander can't move. The fear just overcomes Xander as the claws from the werewolf embed itself into his chest again. Xander goes down to five hit points. Is Xander gonna end in the park? Uh, everyone in the house can just hear this wolf and sc screams uh, and are standing at the window trying to see into the park, but all they can see is the, the bushes in the privet. As Xander pushes the werewolf away, scrabbling to his feet, he attempts to backpedal uh, to get some distance between himself and the werewolf, and yet again fire an arrow at the werewolf. Surely this time it must hit. Uh, three minus one is a two. Again, in the panic and the inexperience with a bow Xander has, the arrow flicks against the ground and skims off into uh, the bushes to the side. The werewolf on Xander's eyes both watch it flit off as the werewolf locks its jaws or attempts to lock its jaws onto Xander. <gasps> Successfully biting down into Xander's shoulder, Xander screams in pain. Now, instead of taking these two points of damage, what we can do is we can roll on the injury table. So you can only have a total of three injuries maximum, but to try and negate some damage, you can give yourself a permanent injury. So we'll, we'll give Xander a permanent injury instead of him like one. A facial scar, okay. So we have a, a huge chunk of Xander's cheek is torn out by the werewolf. Uh, Xander is now at minus one charisma. Xander howls in pain and the werewolf howls in bloodlust. Uh, Xander will attempt, so, he's, so an unarmed attack is at minus two. Xander's bow is at minus one. Xander might as well keep trying a bow. I'm gonna try a different dice. 
Uh, Xander might as well keep trying the, the bow. Uh, Xander will push the werewolf off of his chest, uh, scrabble out, and from a ground, a laying position, Xander will attempt to shoot at the werewolf. Oh, Xander is awful with this bow. So that goes to a two. So we would do a four divided by two is a half rounded down to zero. Uh, the, the arrow hits the werewolf in the chest and his matted fur and sheer muscularity, is that a word? Uh, musculature, uh, causes the arrow not to penetrate and instead it falls to the ground. And again, he bashes against Xander. Does Xander dodge? Xander does not dodge. Uh, knocking Xander in the chest, throwing him across the, the park into a um, swing. Uh, Xander is going to take a six, a crippled arm. You lose the use of one arm. You may no longer use weapons that require two hands. You may stay, still use rifles and shotguns with a minus one. So he has a crippled arm which means he can no longer use the bow. I think he's probably out of hours by now. So Xander will, will uh, his left arm hanging limp by his side, he will pull his knife uh, uh, and uh, charge in to attack the wheel. He might run away actually. What if he runs away? He's, he's, a, bit, he's a bit stuffed, but we could have Xander attempt to run away. Now, to run away, uh, to escape, you, you have to roll a four or more, uh, so the level of the monster to escape. So then you can only escape back to a place where you have been before. You can't escape into a new. So he can escape back to Buffy's house, uh, go in. Xander won't die, uh, but has a massive chunk off of his face and a crippled arm. Uh, and then uh, Violet could go out. So what we'll attempt to do is we will attempt to get Xander to escape from the park to try and backpedal out, uh, go across uh, to the house, and then tag team with Violet, who will come out uh, into the park and see if Violet can, uh, with her rifle, can finish off the werewolf and you know, show Xander uh, that he really is unable to do things. So uh, Xander needs to roll a four or more. A six. So we also have that in this game that sixes explode. We have exploding dice. Uh, another six, so a 12. Another six, an 18. Uh, another six, 24. Uh, 25. So if that Xander would have done that with his bow, uh, the, uh, the 25 would divide by four being, so what would that be? That would be, so if we called it 26, that would be a 13, that would be a seven and a half. So it's probably gonna be six or seven, which would be times two because of the damage of the bow, doing a 12 point damage, which would just kill but sadly it didn't. So Xander gets back to, to, the, to the house, uh, banging on the door, arm bleeding, crippled, hanging by his side, huge chunk out of his face. Uh, everyone uh, uh, breathes, everyone's sharp intakes of breath from uh, Violet and Merrick who is in the house. Merrick takes Xander out to the kitchen, uh, lays him on the table and starts to try and do medical aid. As Violet says, I'll go, don't worry, picking up her rifle. I'll go and see to this werewolf. Uh, so we will keep the werewolf in that square there. So I'll write werewolf here. Uh, Violet will go, uh, so the werewolf is now pacing around the park. Uh, we'll say the werewolf is still taking the damage, is on, on six hit points, but Violet has never stood against a, a werewolf before. So Violet will need to roll fear uh, or lose the one sanity or be minus one defense roll. She she is very agile, so she does have a plus one defense. <laughs> so, so, one character down. <laughs> if anyone watched the Morkborg series, does this remind you of anything? Uh, so, uh, stalking carefully, hunting, uh, in her plaid, plaid shirt and her beanie. Uh, she wears a gray beanie, a gray beanie that, uh, that her dad knitted for her uh, with uh, badges uh, all pinned onto the front of it, uh, looking stern and, and as though uh, Violet now and now she has the Slayer awakened, uh, awakening. Uh, she will assist in the the vanquishing of this this werewolf. Uh, 
Maybe, maybe we'll do do this. So we'll still say this is only one square, uh, and and Violet is going to go hunting the werewolf. Uh, the werewolf could potentially surprise Violet. There's a two in six chance that the werewolf will surprise Violet. Nope. Uh, Violet hears some rustling in the in the, the bushes over to the side, and she can clearly see the area where the fight has occurred. There's blood on the floor. There's uh, which is fresh. Uh, there's blood all over the sunny day at the moment. Uh, there's litter, which is all over the place as well. But she can clearly see there's a rustling, and she turns and points her uh, her rifle into the bushes, as there's a terrifying howl uh, in the air, uh, sending fear through uh, Violet, coursing through Violet. Uh, oh, she's terrified. Uh, we will have her lose one sanity uh, from the, t the fear of having to face, the first time she has faced uh, an unworldly, uh, an unworldly, unlike those little aliens that got shown in Mexico. Uh, as you can tell what the date is, because uh, it, was, it was the other day. Uh, so the werewolf parting the, the bushes steps out into the moonlight uh, the blood of Xander fresh uh, on its jaws, uh, its claws dripping uh, with uh, the, the leftovers from the battle with Xander just now. Uh, Violet takes aim through the iron sights of her rifle, uh, she's plus two to hit, uh, and shoots at the werewolf. <laughs> uh, oh dear me. Uh, the fear of having faced a werewolf for the first time sends the bullet wide and the werewolf bounds in uh, to Violet who attempts to dodge out of the way. So Violet only needs to roll a three to dodge instead of a four because Violet is plus one. Uh, she's agile. And she got a six. Uh, so a 10, so an 11. So it bounds. Uh, Violet swiftly dodges to the side uh, racking a new uh, round into the rifle, she uh, shoots at the werewolf again at point blank range. Come on, I'd said point blank range. Let's get a good roll. A two plus the two from the rifle is a four, meaning that it does shoot, uh, 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 grazing across its back, doing two points of damage to it because it's it's a rifle. Uh, it streaks across its back. Howling in pain, it turns to uh, to bash Violet and attempt to hit Violet. Uh, Violet is caught by a backhanded attack, so that would be a two plus one is a three, which doesn't meet the four. Uh, throwing Violet violently against uh, the the bench, the park bench, because it does two damage, so that would go to a nine. Violently against the park bench, uh, she breathes deeply, uh, looking as though she's knocked out. The werewolf slowly pads towards her as she raises her head and fires again from the rifle. A seven exploding six. What do we got? We got a three plus a two is a five. Another hit, this time striking uh, it across the face, gouging uh, across its cheek in a very similar way to the way that Xander was attacked. Violet laughs, jumps to her feet as the werewolf attempts to attack Violet, uh, ending her life. Uh, oh no, Violet dodges. Uh, Violet uh, jumps up onto the park bench, uh, one foot against the back of the, 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 the bench, one foot on the foot of the bench, as the werewolf strikes its, its giant muscular uh, arm cutting underneath the, the bench under Violet's feet. Violet points down with the rifle. This would be the ending shot if it, if it works. Yes, four, six. Uh, shooting down into the back of the werewolf's head, uh, there is a, a splat of uh, brain matter uh, across the uh, floor underneath the bench and Violet begins to uh, breathe deeply. So she used four rounds, I think. Uh, if I got that wrong, do say, because I, have, I haven't really been doing the ammunition properly. Now, for every uh, violent encounter, you gain one XP, which you can spend at any time. So Violet could, uh, for example, 
uh, clicked up. Is it called Marksman? What skill to allow her to shoot. Cut there. Okay. Uh, good shot. Uh, oh yeah, that's what Merrick has. Uh, add plus one to attacks with a ranged weapon, so so she can get good shot. Anyway, now we're in the park. So what we can attempt to do in the park is we can search the park to see if we can find anything interesting. So a search roll is a d6. On a one, it's a random encounter. On a two to five, nothing is found. And on a six, you find something. A six. So Violet can roll four times on the useful items table or the random object table and pick a single result or roll on the random book table if you're in the library or gain one clue. So is it, does this mean we can just gain a clue? So possibly, okay, so what I'm gonna say is that we will gain a clue because we need clues to go to the witch's coven that the, uh, as the werewolf dies, it manifests itself back into a person and Violet notices uh, it has uh, some arcane tattoos all the way across its back, uh, this man's back. Uh, which uh, uh, Violet has, uh, Merrick has been talking about and may give a clue to the location of the coven. So Violet quickly scrolls it uh, on a piece of, on a receipt uh, in her pocket. Uh, and we mark this as searched and we'll put a one there. <clears throat> and now Violet gets to move to a new uh, square. Do we have enough time? Yeah, we'll do one more square, we'll do this one. So Violet will move into this square here. Uh, she leaves the, uh, the park, uh, pushing forward into the town. Uh, cars are on the streets uh, in weird angles. There's sirens and uh, gunshots and screams in the air. Uh, Indispersed with just uh, more terrifying silence. Oh look, a street one. So that comes to a six, and six says roll on the streets table, which is what we're describing, the streets. So uh, moving into the street, uh, between the cars, we get a six. Play event three. Ooh, okay. So there are all these events at the back that you aren't supposed to read, and that you just come to. So we've got number three, possessed car. As you walk down the street, an ominous looking black car begins to rev up and charges towards you. Make a level four save, plus one if you are agile. We are agile. If you foul, lose two life. If you pass the first save, you may move out of the street and avoid further attacks. If the car hits you, you are knocked down and the car... Uh, okay, so it is a possessed car, okay? So we need to make a level four save. So we need a three or more, a five. So as the car revs up, so I'm gonna write uh, event three possessed car, that's number two. So Violet gets to run away, so uh, the car comes tearing past Violet, who just by a hair's breadth turns uh, as the car, and you can see uh, her shirt flapping as the car moves past her. Uh, Violet dashes out uh, of the streets and into another area where we will roll that area. God, I, think, I think we've got enough time. So uh, Violet has avoided the possessed car and is moves into this square here, which is another street table, which is, so this I'll say there's a street. So we have another, so she runs down the street, uh, turns a corner and here she encounters 
spot a nice place to hide. You may create a safe house and heal one life and one sanity. If you create a safe house and it's the third safe house in play, the safe, okay. So we have, uh, there is a camper van. With the door looking open. Uh, so, so what, how, what time have we got? So we had, uh, so that would be two o'clock. Uh, that is 4 a.m. So it's 4 a.m. Uh, box three and Violet has found a safe house. Uh, choose around. Every time you move into this safe house, you may heal one life and one sanity. So I will go heal one life, one sanity. Okay, so uh, Violet uh, sits back into in the camper van and she heals one life, taking her to 10 life and one sanity, uh, taking her back to full sanity. So Violet has uh, defeated the werewolf, dodged the car, which we won't count as defeating it, so Violet doesn't get an experience point for that. And now Violet has found a safe house in the streets. Uh, she has one clue towards finding where the witch's coven is, uh, but hasn't quite found it yet. So I think we will end our first session there. I will say, Happy Halloween. And we will meet Violet again very soon. Sleep tight now. <laughs>